Meizu Pro 7 with Helio P25 processor, also known as the Meizu Pro 7S, is the cheapest version of the Meizu Pro 7 and also the only one with an option for Band 20 LTE. The smartphone currently costs between 270 and 300 euros. Now in this review we're gonna check out if it's worth it. The Meizu Pro 7 was lent to us by a CZT shop for testing. A link to the shop can be found in the video description below. The Meizu Pro 7S comes in exactly the same packaging as the Meizu Pro 7 Plus. The scope of delivery does not differ. In terms of design, the Meizu Pro 7S is identical to the other models. Only the dimensions are much smaller than the ones of the Plus version. Meizu has also achieved excellent workmanship here and the premium standard is matte. There really aren't any weaknesses at all. The eye catcher is the info display on the back, which we will take a closer look at later. Like the Pro 7 Plus, the Pro 7S with 7.4mm is also very slim. And in this case it is even more impressive when considering how much technology has been squeezed inside the small body. The front is typical for Meizu and in the golden variant we own comes in white color. The home button leaves a good impression, can be pressed comfortably and doesn't clatter or crack. A status LED is located above the display, however this one only lights up in white. The 5.2 inch display is a pleasant compromise between usability for smaller hands and space for the content. The display's bezels are kept slim and thus provide an elegant look. The display is based on Super AMOLED technology and works with Full HD resolution. With a short viewing distance, individual pixels are visible, but with a normal distance you don't notice anything. The image looks sharp and natural. The brightness is sufficient for outdoor use, better than the Meizu Pro 6, but not quite as high as the Meizu Pro 7 Plus. The 10-point digitizer reacts prompt and precise to inputs. The gliding properties of the glass are good, Gorilla Glass 5 protects the surface against deep scratches. The info display on the back is also based on AMOLED technology and provides information about received messages, time and day of the week, a pedometer and a weather widget. Selfies with the main camera can be captured by quickly swiping up or down. In the mini camera app there are three modes, blur, beauty and normal. There is also a music only mode in which the Meizu Pro 7S turns into an mp3 player and is controlled exclusively via the small info display. Like on the Meizu Pro 7 Plus there is currently no possibility to extend the functionality and to control third party apps via the info display. A global control of music playback for example would have been useful. So it remains to be seen if Meizu will implement these ideas in the future. According to Meizu the Pro 7S is equipped with a Helio P25 chipset clocked at 2.5GHz. However this information is just as incorrect as it is for other Chinese phones advertising the same chipset. The MT6757CD is used on this phone and its maximum clock rate is 2.39GHz. However, the performance is still convincing and will be absolutely sufficient for the majority of smartphone users. The Pro 7S runs wonderfully smooth and reacts promptly to inputs. Performance differences to the Helio X30 variants can only be seen in demanding or poorly programmed apps, for example when scrolling through the Facebook feed where the Pro 7S occasionally stutters a bit. And when you play games of course you notice a difference. Not necessarily for all titles, but the Helio P25 doesn't manage to handle the full graphics quality in very demanding games. For example on the new Race Kings game, the Helio X30 in the Meizu Pro 7 Plus easily handles the highest graphics settings, while the Pro 7S requires a reduction in graphics quality to provide a smooth gaming experience. Both Meizu Pro 7 models with 5.2 inch display, no matter if with the Helio P25 or the Helio X30, come with 4GB instead of 6GB of RAM. For most users this will still be enough, we never had the need for more RAM in our tests. The Helio P25 model does not have UFS 2.1 memory, but only eMMC 5.1 memory. But this still achieves quite good data rates. The capacity is 64GB and there is no extension possibility. All important sensors are present and none of the sensors had any issues. The fingerprint sensor in the home button is triggered after pressing the button. The unlocking process is pleasantly fast and the sensor has a very low failure rate. The Type-C connector uses the USB 2.0 standard and offers support for USB OTG. The Meizu Pro 7S runs Flyme 6 with Android 7.0 as its base. Unfortunately, like the Pro 7 Plus, it again comes with an outdated security patch from March 2017. In contrast to the Plus model, the Meizu Pro 7S is also available as a global version, whose firmware version number is marked with the letter M. This one supports Band 20 LTE and multi-language. The version we have here, however, is the Chinese A version, which does not support Band 20 LTE and also no multi-language. 
Please note that you cannot install the M firmware on a Chinese A model. On the positive side, the app compatibility of the Helio P25 is somewhat better than the Helio X30 processor. But there are still some construction sites here. For example, Facebook Messenger has display problems. And also, with the Meizu Pro 7S we couldn't get our banking app to work like on the Meizu Pro 7 Plus, because the SMS verification is not compatible with Flyme OS. The Meizu Pro 7S performs very well in mobile network reception. The reception power is great. Even in areas with poor coverage, the handset still achieves a comparably good signal strength. There is nothing to complain about when it comes to Wi-Fi as well. There were no signal losses or hiccups throughout the whole house. It's just a pity that the Helio P25 model only supports ABGN Wi-Fi and to this not more than 100 Mbit of downstream. GPS works flawless as well, the fixed time is short, the signal strength is good even in bad weather and the accuracy is high so there are no interruptions during navigation or tracking. The media speaker of the Pro 7S is hidden in the lower frame next to the USB port. It becomes very loud and offers quite intense bases considering the size. Audiophiles will love using high quality headphones on this phone. The 3.5mm connector is powered by a dedicated amplifier. Like the Pro 7 Plus, the Pro 7S is one of the best sounding handsets we have tested so far. The Meizu Pro 7's voice quality is in the upper midfield, the quality without voice over LTE could be a little bit clearer, but apart from that there is nothing to complain about. The earpiece is loud and does not scratch and noise cancelling works perfectly. The Meizu Pro 7S is equipped with the very same camera as the Pro 7 Plus. It consists of two 12 megapixel Sony IMX386 sensors with f2.0 aperture, one of which operates in black and white mode. The front camera uses a 16 megapixel sensor with f2.0 aperture. But are the cameras in the Meizu Pro 7S really identical to those in the Meizu Pro 7X30 and the Meizu Pro 7 Plus models? No, the differences aren't huge, but they are definitely there. The least difference between the two models is obviously when it comes to taking pictures at daylight. The Meizu Pro 7 with P25 performs about the same as the X30 models, except for minimal differences in color reproduction. The detail and sharpness of the pictures is great and we had a lot of fun taking photos with this phone. Some of the results are simply stunning. The biggest difference between the Helio P25 and the Helio X30 models is noticeable in low light photos. The Meizu Pro 7S is also able to shoot great pictures at night, especially when using the manual mode in combination with a tripod, but they don't look as realistic in color. Especially in artificial lighting, they often appear somewhat too reddish. These differences are probably due to the different ISPs of the two processors. The LED flash is a bit disappointing, it is not as bright as those on earlier Meizu flagships. In bouquet mode, the Meizu Pro 7 shares the weaknesses of its big brother. The bouquet effect can look really great, but most of the time the edge detection doesn't work properly, so areas that should be sharp come out blurred. Meizu must continue to improve the situation in order to unleash the full potential. The front camera is a little bit of a disappointment as well in terms of quality, but this is not a big point of criticism since you can always use the main camera for selfies. Unfortunately, the Meizu Pro 7 with Helio P25 can only record videos with Full HD. We don't understand why it lacks 4K support. Actually, the chipset would support it. The continuous autofocus works very fast and EIS is supported as well. The quality of videos is in the upper mid-range. For landscape videos, we would like to see a bit more sharpness and detail. The audio quality is good. Last part of this review is the battery life. 3000 mAh have been squeezed inside the thin handset and these make up for a great screen on time of just over 9 hours. Most users can expect to reach around 2 days of battery life. Charging unfortunately takes a bit long with 2-2.5 to 2 hours. Conclusion, the Meizu Pro 7S turns out to be a successful entry drug into the flagship world of Meizu. The handset offers a really good price performance ratio with very few compromises. The greatest strength of the smartphone are the reception quality, the quality of the camera and the battery life. The Meizu Pro 7S definitely is a pick you should consider when looking for an affordable all-rounder with a premium touch. 
And that's all for this video review. A shop link and more information is located down in the video description. I was Christopher for CMM, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.